Gosh, that's the best looking crew I've ever seen.
Good evening. My name is Marianne Rosanico, and I'd like to welcome you to the virtual, our first ever virtual orientation at Santan Junior High School. I am the principal here at Santan and would like to tell you a little bit about myself before we get started. Um, I am a native of Chandler. I ch attended Chandler schools from grade school all the way through um, graduating from Chandler High School. This is my 17th year in the district. I spent nine years as a teacher at Basha High School and then um, was hired as Dean of Students here at Santan Junior High School. I was Dean for three years and following that I was Assistant Principal for four years and I am in, like I said, in my first year as principal. So um, before we get started with the orientation, I just wanna take time to introduce my assistant principals that I have here with me tonight. You can see here, Mr. Hugo Garcia, he is the assistant principal that's in charge of our master schedule and curriculum. So I wanna give Hugo a minute to tell you a little bit about himself. Good evening, future stormers. Um, this is my 23rd year in education and my sixth year here at Chandler Unified School District. I'm also entering my third year here at uh, Santan Junior High as an assistant principal. Uh, I lived in Denver for 18 years and worked there for 18 years uh, as a science teacher, a secondary science teacher, both at the junior high level and at the high school level as well too. Uh, I'm excited to be here. I love our, our Santan community and I can't wait to see you guys next year here on our campus. Thank you, Hugo. So I also want to introduce my second assistant principal, and that is Janine Scarangelli, who is assistant principal over and also athletic director, and she also supervises clubs among many, many, many other things that she does for us here at Santan. So Janine, if you could just take a minute to tell our audience about yourself. Hi, Future Stormers. This is Janine Scarangelli, I am in my 24th year in education and my 21st in Chandler Unified School District. I proudly opened up Santan Junior High back in 2002 as an eighth grade social studies teacher and a coach of many sports. I am so excited that I was able to join my family again here at Santan as an assistant principal and athletic director. I'm really looking forward to meeting all of you and you getting involved at our school. Thank you, Janine. So before we get started on the a presentation, I want to give you an idea of what the format is for tonight. So we are going to start with presenting some information. It'll be myself and Mr. Garcia and um, Ms. Scarangelli giving you information. And then we're going to follow that by a question and answer session. While we go through this, as you have questions, you can type them into the chat box and I have our counselors here with us that are going to compile those questions and then moderate our question and answer session at the end of our presentation. So we should have plenty of time to answer your questions at the end. Um, just make sure that you're typing them in so, so we can get to them. Go ahead and, and advance this. There we go. So we're a few things that I wanted to talk about Santan Junior High. There are so many things that um, we're proud of here at Santan Junior High. One thing being that we're an A plus school of excellence um, awarded by the Arizona Educational Foundation. We normally operate in a school within a school model. And what that means is prior to this year, our teachers were organized into teams. The teams were one teacher from each content area would teach a common 120 students. When we entered this environment this year um, with the COVID pandemic, we had to make some adjustments. So this year we are departmentalized. That will be um, that will be you know evaluated as we get to the end of the year, and you know we'll look at what we're able to do for next year. So, but normally we operate in a school within a school mo model. And even though we don't have teams this year, we still have team organization through our departments and have managed to maintain the, the spirit that we have at Santan Junior High School. We also have a STEAM emphasis um, within our curriculum and our electives. As we go through this program, we're gonna talk about some of our, our programs that, that fall within this category. Just kind of a, a little summary, um, STEAM stands for um, a few different things. If you look at, it's an acronym. The first one is science. The second one is technology. The third one is engineering. The fourth one is art. And the fifth one is math. So we have classes that fall under all of those areas. And again, we're excited to tell you about those. We also have tutoring programs for our students. We offer that every morning before school. We do have one 
probably the most student centered staff that I've ever worked with. Santan Junior High School to me is a, a really special place. I um, like I said, I've been in the Chandler community a long time. My own children attended Chan Santan Junior High School, so I have a passion for the school and for for making it the very best that it can be. And even though this year has has presented its own unique challenges, um, I still love coming to work every day and I still love serving the students and staff at Santan Junior High. We have regular um, on level programs. We have honors classes and we also have a gifted program that we house at Santan Junior High. So we have you know, something for every student. Our fine arts department is award winning and our athletics. We are very proud of our athletics. Um, we've got many, many EBC championships, which our athletic director, Mrs. Garen Jelly, will go over for you as we get through the presentation. And then we have a phenomenal booster club. I can't can't thank them enough. And and we can't run this school without the port the support of parents and appreciate so much the the support our booster club gives us. Okay, I can't couldn't have this presentation without bragging a little bit on my staff. So I have the best staff. Um, I know I'm a little bit biased, but I just I can't say enough about how wonderful my staff is. There are just a few examples on this slide of um, accomplishments of my staff. The one on the left is Kathy Mejia, who is our our um, facts teacher, family and consumer sciences, and she was awarded the Rotary Club Teacher of the Month award. Um, up at the top, I have Donna Gustafson, who is our student council advisor, as well as our social studies um, teacher in our gifted um, academy, and she also was given the Sun Lakes Rotary Teacher of the Month. At the bottom is my seventh grade Spanish teacher, Anna Abbott, who she's holding a $5,000 check, which was really, really nice. She was the Esperanza Latin um, Latino teacher of the year last year. And then on the right is um, math teacher Missy Stanley, who was awarded the Triple A award from the Chandler School District, and she's pictured there with uh, Dr. Camille Castile. A few other reasons why I believe that our teachers are absolute rock stars. A few examples um, up in the upper left hand corner um, during virtual learning, the, t the staff had to adjust really quickly to teaching in a, a completely different modality. And I know students had to adjust. It was a big adjustment for everybody. The picture in the upper left shows Mr. Phillips, and he basically set up a command central in his classroom. He had his students up on his um, projector on the large screen. He has all the technology that he needs um, to interact with his students when we are in a virtual environment. If you go to the middle um, picture on this slide, upper middle picture, that's Kara Odom who is a science teacher. And again, I just have a picture of her also working in a virtual environment. Upper right hand picture, um, you might be able to determine the us minus you equals sad. That is my ma a math teacher. So I thought that was very creative. And this was actually last year at the end of the year um, the teams did a drive by um, kind of a goodbye and, and you know gave the kids a little gift at the end of the year, even though they weren't here with us in person, we made sure that we um, acknowledged the eighth graders that were leaving us and also the seventh graders that were going to be moving up. So the picture in the lower left corner is of another team just again greeting our students. They were in cars driving through the bus loop and you know having them giving them a message and, and telling them to enjoy their summer. The picture in the middle bottom is um, just some teachers enjoying something that the Booster Club did for us not too long ago it was a holiday luncheon. We ate outside. We are socially distanced, but still feel it's really important to keep that team spirit and um, camaraderie among the staff. And then the final picture on the right is of teachers last year, last spring when we were teaching virtually. Um, my teachers actually went out and delivered personally to the households of our students that earned the Storm and Scholars Award. So again, you know, just want everybody to know that as a staff and as a school that I feel that we go above and beyond, that we do what we need to do to connect to, with our students and, and have a really great climate here at Santan Junior High. I can't have a presentation without talking about my amazing counselors, amazing, awesome counselors. 
So this is a picture of them, and like I said earlier, they will be joining the presentation a little bit later as my moderators when we do the question and answer session. But on the left is Melissa Edwards. She is my um, head administrative counselor. She oversees the Santad Gifted Academy, um, the special education department, and then she's also um, pretty much spearheads re the registration process here at Santan. So she, if you can imagine, has been a very, very busy person the last couple of weeks as we embark on, on registering our students. Lindsay Valentine in the middle is currently our eighth grade counselor. And again, because we have that philosophy that um, we want to connect with students and make sure that, that we establish rela relationships, the counselors loop with their class. So. Lindsay will loop down to seventh grade next year, so she will be your child's counselor for both seventh and eighth grade. And then we have Kathy Roman, who is currently the seventh grade counselor, so she will loop up next year and be our eighth grade counselor. And again, I can't overlook the support staff. Um, I have an amazing support staff. We cannot run a school without the individuals that you see in these pictures. The upper left hand corner is what I call my dream team. Those are um, our security cards, Eric Bautista on the left and Roy Mesquita on the right. They basically do just about everything for us. They keep our campus safe. They um, monitor our lunch periods. They take care of you know students passing in the hallways. They are just awesome and I can't say enough good things about them. On the upper right is our health assistant, Carrie Lanchin. She um, does everything. She is, you know, the health assistant for the for our students. And as you can imagine, in the COVID environment, Carrie has been working beyond working hard, many, many long hours to keep um, students safe and to make sure that we're following CDC guidelines as we need to. Carrie also coaches. She's a fabulous coach. She coaches cross country. She coaches girls soccer. She just really is excels at connecting with students through her coaching job as well. Lower left hand is our wonderful custodian staff and what you're seeing there is we um, we had there's a national custodians week, so we recognize them with gift baskets and gift cards and, and lunch. So that was a picture of them with their gifts. And then on the right is my team that truly, truly excels in customer service. This is my front office staff. So I'm going to go through Renee Brandon upper left is our um, office clerk Donna Schreier up in the upper uh, in the middle on the upper row is our registrar. On the right is Larika Quinn, our attendance clerk. And then on the lower left is Sue Ann Tacky, who takes care of our um, in-school suspension room. Ray Moylan, um, the next one on the bottom row, second from the left is our student services. And then Carrie is pictured in that picture as well. And then our office manager and administrative assistant, Kim Bradenberg. So again, they excel and provide what I feel is amazing customer service for our families. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to um, my assistant principal in charge of master schedule and curriculum. He's going to discuss our team setup, teachers and courses that that we offer to our students. So Hugo, if you'd like to go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, so I'd like to just expand a little bit more on the team concept that Ms. Rosanica was talking about earlier. Uh, you know, in normal times we have teams and, and what that means is that we have one math, one ELA, one social studies and one science teacher working together as a cohort. Those teachers share those about 120 students and essentially it's that school within a school concept. The advantage of teaming is that your student has the same core teachers and they plan, coordinate and look out for the students on a daily basis. Unfortunately, this year we had to move away from that concept and we are really hoping to get back to that concept for next school year. Um, this year we focused on just academic teams. Our math teachers work together, our language arts teachers work together, uh, and our science teachers and social studies, and it became more departmentalized. Um, and we offered a storm class, kind of almost like a home period uh, per se, so that we can keep track of our students. We didn't, we didn't want this year any kind of students to fall between the cracks. Um, and that's what the team concept does, is be able to uh, make sure that all students uh, are cared for and nurtured in appropriate ways here. Uh, and hopefully we get back to that team concept next year. 
But for this year, our departments have some special messages for you guys. So our math teachers are saying to you guys, hey, they're looking forward to seeing you next school year. Uh, the seventh grade math department, they work collaborative, collaboratively to develop lessons and learning experiences for all students that are meaningful and fun for all students. The seventh grade ELA teachers, they can't wait to see you as well next year. Throughout the year, you will be exploring literature through novel studies, short stories, poetry, and independent reading. In addition, you will complete research projects while learning how to use appropriate sources and cite textual evidence. Writing units will include argumentative, informative, and narrative. And you can see pictures of all the teachers up there, our math uh, team and our language arts team as well too. Moving on to seventh grade social studies. They say it's one of the most important classes you will ever take here. Um, that's what Mr. Mosqueda says. He's an awesome seventh grade teacher. In this class, you will learn how to be a global citizen. You will learn about governments, re uh, revolutions, wars, progress, and innovation. You will also learn how our world got to be the way it is and how future generations can change history. Now, you won't find a more energetic group of teachers than the seventh grade science team. They are a fun group of teachers that believe science is best learned in a fun, hands-on environment. They say, get ready to be creative in science class next year. We also offer lots of elective classes here at Santan Junior High. Um, your student will be able to have an opportunity to have, you know, potentially up to eight electives while they're here for two years as seventh and eighth graders. So I'll just touch base really quickly on some of these courses. Uh, drama has lots of theater games that they uh, get their kids involved with. Ms. Zimper takes care of all students, including those shy ones. She says there is room for everyone in her class. She needs artists, directors, writers, and tech people. They have Jimmy Fallon lip sync battles in which students compete for prizes. She has guest improv teachers that come in, including those from Improv Mania. There's also a gory makeup day near Halloween that kids just love. Ms. Zimper acts in the all female comedy group and she's been teaching drama for 10 years and she used to act in New York City. So there's lots of experience in that drama department. FACTS, which stands for Family and Consumer Science, will cover job readiness skills, sewing, college research skills, and basic cooking, basic um, baking skills, such as measuring, knife skills, mixing, and sanitation procedures. Art is a project-based class where students are encouraged to be creative and imaginative while learning art concepts, skills, and techniques. Students will be introduced to, any array, to an array of materials and will have the freedom of creative expression for many projects. Art history and design elements will play an important role in the development of their art. PE, these classes offer that basic foundation of physical education by exposing students to a variety of individual and team sports with an emphasis placed on promoting lifetime sports and physical fitness. We also offer some weight training classes uh, in which students learn muscle names, their locations, exercises to increase specific muscle strength, fitness zones, heart rates, and goal setting as well too. Spanish, we offer Spanish 7th and Spanish 8th. Spanish 7 is an introduction to the language and culture of the Hispanic world. The student learns basic vocabulary and grammar and emphasis is on listening, reading comprehension and simple conversation skills through role playing, skits and other interactive methods. This class, this class is not designed for native speakers, but this course is a requirement. It's a prerequisite for Spanish 8. Students who complete Spanish 7 and 8 will meet the requirements for entrance into Spanish 2 at the high school level. Digital media, computer science, and yearbook are all taught by Mrs. Johnson. She's a phenomenal teacher here. Courses, those courses offer many different ways for students to have fun as they learn new ways to interact with technology. Students create various projects and develop real life skills that they will use for years to come. Student Council, Mrs. Edwards um, will talk about Student Council later on in this presentation. She'll talk about the requirements and how to be able to sign up for that. Concert, we also offer two uh, orchestra courses, concert orchestra and chamber orchestra. Essentially, concert uh, orchestras are entry level, not designed for those advancing students who need a challenge, but are not quite ready for the chamber orchestra. Attendance at all performances is mandatory and students will perform several times throughout the year. 
uh, perform at a state festival and expand on bowing techniques and shifting. In the chamber orchestra, um, this is a string orchestra, is a select group of students who have reached a higher degree of playing proficiency. This class is to meet the needs of the more advanced musicians who require more challenge than any other junior high string student. Attendance at all rehearsals and those performances are also mandatory. We also have two Project Lead the Way courses. Design and modeling is the first one. Um, in here, students learn the basic 3D modeling techniques, multi-view and isometric sketching, CAD or computer-aided design, and other engineering skills. Students will engage in collaborative activities to design solutions to various uh, problems. Our second course, Automation and Robotics, students will collaborate to build mechanisms with VEX parts and use them uh, in, the design, in design challenges. They learn computer programming with Robot C and accept challenging projects that connect VEX builds to Robot C. Uh, and you can see all this technology that we use uh, for our Project Lead the Way courses. And we also have 3D printers here on our campus and they're able to design um, and use those appropriately as well too. For our choir program, um, they spend time with friends who enjoy music while learning how to sing better, understand written music, and express themselves with songs from the past and of the present. Santan choir members are also, uh, also go on to sing with advanced choirs at Hamilton, Basha, Perry, and Chandler High Schools. Our band program is taught by Mr. Hancock. It includes seventh and eighth grade concert band, jazz band, beginning and intermediate guitar classes, as well as a competitive indoor drumline program. Uh, if you can see that those are highlighted on your on our presentations, they're highlighted in blue. Uh, later on, you can click on those and actually watch the performances um, on your on their on your own time. So again, you can get more information on all these elective programs on our school website, as well on the attached links that are on there. You can click on them and you'll be able to see some of the live presentations. And now I'll turn it over to Mrs. Edwards. Well, she will speak on the process of registering for all, all courses, including electives. All right, hi guys. All right, so a couple things you need to know about the electives here at Santan Junior High is that we work on a day one, day two rotation. So even though you may sign up for drama, you would only go to drama every other day. So you would actually get the choice to pick a couple different electives, which is kind of nice because you get to kind of go out and engage in a couple of different classes. So it's kind of nice because you get to pick a couple and see what you're actually interested in. So if you look here, it says that each student is enrolled in two elective classes for each semester. So maybe you want to pick PE and drama. So you get to kind of see which one you're more interested in for when you get into high school. Um, every class meets for 70 minutes, and like I said, it's a day one, day two rotation. So maybe one week you would get to go to your day one class three times, but then that next week you would only go to that class two times. Um, so the same classes go for the entire year, but we actually have some classes which actually meet for a year. So I am actually getting ready to go out and meet with every elementary. If I haven't been to your school yet, don't worry because I have a couple of classes that I'm still going out to this week. So if I haven't been to your school yet, don't worry. You guys should be getting a yellow registration form and on that yellow registration form, I've been kind of explaining to you guys um, that you guys are going to be filling that out. We do have an electives video, which I'm sorry I did miss on that last page. There is an electives video that you guys will actually get to um, go to and you'll get to see every elective that we have. I know Mr. Garcia talked about them, but on that video, if you guys um, didn't get enough information, you can click on that when this is posted on the website tomorrow, make sure you guys go there. But on the registration form, which is here, um, you guys can actually see that there are semester electives listed on the top and then there are full year electives that are listed on the bottom. Over on the right hand side, you'll actually see um, this is actually a screenshot that I gave of last year's form, so it isn't 100% correct. The only class that we have that you have to fill out an application for this year is student council. So that's the only form or the only class you have to fill out the application for. Those are due February 15th. Please do not be afraid that this class has an application. It's a great class because those are the students that get to plan all the fun events that we have at our assemblies. They are the ones who get a little bit more freedom because they get to get a little bit more free reign on campus because they're the ones putting up all of the posters. They're going out and asking all of the teachers about information for our um, spirit weeks. They actually get to plan our spirit weeks. 
So if you're in student council, you get to kind of have a little bit more freedom and you get to plan for all, all the fun events. So please feel free to um, get that application. If you can't find it on the website, there is a link to it there. Um, I will happily email it out to you guys if you need it. My email is right there on the website too, right on that registration page. But on this form, please do not just put an X or a check mark. You need to put one through six. OK, and that's one through six on all of it. Please do not just put a one through six on the semester and on the full year. It's one through six on all of this because number one will be the class that you want the most. Number two is next in line and all the way down through six. We really do try to make sure that you guys get the class that you want the most, and then we even try to get you your one through three. But if we don't know what classes you want, you just put check marks or X's. We don't know for sure what classes you want, and so we kind of have to guess. I will be coming back out to the elementaries um, starting next week. And if your form isn't filled out correctly, I will try to get your teacher and have them pull you out of class so that I can meet with you one on one just to make sure that your form gets filled out right. Because even though we ask you guys to go into Infinite Campus and fill this out, sometimes Infinite Campus is a little bit glitchy. So we make sure that the yellow form is what we go by if Infinite Campus isn't correct. So that's how we ask you guys to fill out the registration form. Good evening, everyone. This is a part about athletics. We are part of the EVC along with Higley and Cream Creek School Districts. There are 12 schools in total. Santan has always been competitive when it comes to sports. We are a proud partner with Positive Coaching Alliance and strive hard to create better student athletes. Our athletic seasons are by quarter. So tryouts are normally the first or second week of each quarter. We do recommend that you get a physical over the summer when things aren't so hectic because you have to be cleared in order to participate. There is a place on our website, so check it out for more information, especially our checklist, because it will give you everything that needs to get done before tryouts begin. We are EVC champions. In the last year in 2019, 2020, our seventh grade baseball, our seventh grade boys basketball, seventh grade girls volleyball, and eighth grade girls softball took home the championship trophy. This year so far, our eighth grade girls volleyball has taken home the trophy. We have many teams in our first season that went to the semifinals or finals, and we will definitely have some more victories to come. Our cheer is extremely competitive. Last year, they won first place in the USA Regional Competition, and they were also state champions. We will have a video for them for you to see tomorrow when we post this on our website. So just go ahead and hit the highlight reel, and you can see their performance from last year. I'm also in charge of clubs. And these are the lists that we have this year. If you don't see a club that you that's on there that you want, it's easy to start your own. Go ahead and bring the idea and a sponsor to me. And just like mountain biking, this is their first year and they're really excited because they get to practice here with an amazing coach, Mr. Phillips. He does all different kind of courses here and then on the weekends he takes his biking, mountain biking club out on the mountains and they do a lot of fun things. So if you have a passion for riding, you could definitely start next year because he's looking for more people to do it. One of the biggest things that we think here at Santan is getting involved. It's so important to make sure that you get yourself involved. So this slide illustrates kind of the foundation um, of my philosophy as a, as a school leader, and that is that um, you have to understand the power of relationships. Our school wide goal the last couple of years has been it's it's been on establishing and maintaining effective relationships with students and with staff members. So one of the things that we implemented last year was this Friday fun day. So every Friday at lunchtime, we would set up games for the kids outside 
and staff would go out. You see several staff members in, in this picture out playing games with students. We have Mr. Phillips over here who's um, throwing bags and we have Mr. Pizzuto playing Connect Four and then Mrs. Mejia over here playing um, Four Square. So the kids really liked um, this activity, these activities that we did for them on Fridays. Um, unfortunately, this year we have not been able to do that, but we're really looking forward to being able to do some of the fun things on campus next year that we have established just, um, with with our goal of, you know, focusing on student relationships. This slide um, is about our booster club, and again, I can't say how much I appreciate what these um, this club does for us. This is directly from our website and it's also on our Facebook page. Deb Georgievich is our president, R Reba Hooten, the vice president, um, Gordana Lazik, co-vice president, Christine Factor, treasurer, and Kristen Fry, secretary. Some of the things that the Booster Club has done for us in the past that we are, again, so thankful for is they've given us cows and no, not not cows like real cows, but cow stands for um, computers on wheels. So those are the are the docking stations that we have and they have 30 um, laptops in them that charge in these docking stations that that we call cows. So they have greatly aided us in increasing the amount of technology we have available for our students on campus. They have given us funding for shade structures for the amphitheater. They sponsor the student of the month luncheons. They provide us teacher meals. I There was a picture earlier in this presentation where our teachers were enjoying their holiday luncheon and that was um, organized and provided by the um, Booster Club. Um, they have helped with the AstroTurf or funded the AstroTurf that's in our amphitheater reupholstered the Fulton Theater, given us umbrellas for the lunch area. Um, and really one of the, my favorite things that the Booster Club does that I really miss this year is that they sponsor our dances and student events. They do an outstanding job. So again, looking forward to a time when we can can implement some of those fun things back into our into our regular activities at school. Our storm and day. Our storm and day happens um, in July, right before school starts. And typically it is the Thursday prior to the day that students come back. I'm, I haven't posted a date just because of, um, you know, the, the way the schedule is and, and I wanna make sure that we have a firm date before I post it, but it will be the week before students return to school. So more information will be available. Um, as we get closer to that time, but just to, to give you a little idea of what the storm and day is, it's a time when our our incoming students and also our our, um, our returning students come for storming day. Also, they they can get a hard copy of their schedule if they want it. They can get um, by their PE uniforms. We have spirit wear available for them to purchase. We have information about clubs, and again, it's a, just a time of community to to be able to meet their teachers, meet the administrators, and get a feel for what it's like here at Santan Junior High. So we're looking forward to being able to have that in um, July before we return for, for our next school year. I um, wanted to invite you to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We have a lot of things that we post on Facebook and, and also um, our sports our sports, our athletic director uses Twitter to to push out information about sports. They um, we do we do celebrations. We talk about um, you know events that might be happening. So again, I, I would love to have you you um, if you use either one of these social media platforms to follow us on on Facebook and Twitter. So there's the information for for those two sites. So now we are at the question and answer session. So like I had explained before, the format of this is I've had my counselors, my three counselors have been moderating and, and reviewing the questions that you have typed into our, um, our question and answer boxes. And they're going to um, start with me, give me some questions to answer and then rotate through the administrators. They've been kind of filtering them to um, our areas of specialty so that we can give you the information that you need. So. Um, I believe I'm starting with um, Lindsay Valentine is up first. Yes. 
Hello, future stormers. Um, so we have a couple of questions for Mrs. Rosanico. Um, the first one we can start with um, is, do you mind Mrs. Rosanico just explaining again the departmental model and the team or school within the school in case we had any late um, arrivers to the meeting just so they can understand what you mean by those things? No, not at all. That's sometimes it's, it's um, a, a difficult explanation, but what the team model is again and we're not operating under a team model this year this was prior to this year as long as i can remember santan has operated under the school within a school format with the team model so what that means is that we have four content teachers so they have you have your math teacher your science teacher your language arts teacher and your social studies teacher and those four at content area teachers share the same 120 students so they're in a team we used the teams were, used to be were named 7a 7b 7c 7d and then they also had a an actual name so for instance um, 7a was harvard hailstorm and what that is is that those four teachers get to know very well those 120 students they collaborate together to um, you know identify things that might help that student maybe to enrich or to to give behavior support whatever it is that that student needs so it really is kind of like a little um, community within a larger community when we when we operate under a team model a school that is departmentalized um, is how we are this year and that is where and we have a seventh grade math department and eighth grade math department seventh grade social studies department eighth grade social studies department so those departments collaborate together to create curriculum and um, you know decide what's best as far as assessments they create common assessments and do a lot of planning together now, when we do operate with in a team model, the school within a school model, that doesn't mean that we don't have departments. We still had departments, but more of our collaborating took place within the teams rather than in the actual academic departments. So I we'll hope that answered that question. And again, we're still a little up in the air as to how we're going to um, structure the schedule next year. I would like to get back to the team model. Um, like Mr. Garcia said, we had to get away from that because um, because of the pandemic, we were transferring staff to Chandler Online Academy because we had many, many students that transferred and we were having students move out and then with the potential of moving back in. So the departmental model gave us more flexibility when we were trying to welcome students back and also adding and subtracting sections as we needed to. OK, great. Um, the next question is, is do you have college prep at um, Santan Junior High? Yes, we do. Our college prep um, is what we call our honors program. So we offer honors language arts and we offer um, honors math. In addition to our honors math classes, we also have kind of um, what we call our accelerated math program. We offer all the way up to algebra two at Santan Junior High. So um, we offer all the way up to Algebra 2 at Santan Junior High. Um, we do that through our Gifted Academy. So yes, our, our, our courses are college prep courses. Awesome. Um, there was a comment in here that um, some, most of the elementaries are not able to do Drama Club this year. Do you want to just speak a little bit about how we are making our electives like drama and um, maybe band um, you know, COVID safe with the masks and the six feet of distancing. Absolutely. Our our drama teacher, Mrs. Zimfer, um, has done a fantastic job of still allowing um, students to do our drama classes and maintaining that social distance. So I was actually in her classroom the other day. Her chairs are, we used to have large tables in there, so we've taken those away. Chairs are at least six feet apart. And she also, and students are masked the whole time. She's also been really creative about um, teaching a lot of her class outdoors. So anytime the weather permits um, or the activity that she's doing allows, then she moves her class outdoors where um, it's easier to maintain social distance and still, you know, have a good time with drama. And, and having said that, I'm not, I don't want to say that the, the curriculum has changed a little bit based on the, um, the mitigations that we have to have in place because of COVID-19. So we are able to offer it. It just it looks a little different than it did last year. 
OK, perfect. Um, someone asked what our bullying policy is here at Santa and Junior High. I know that's really important and we take that very serious. So if you could explain that, that would be great. We do. We take it very seriously. And again, we have the philosophy that every student needs to feel welcome. They need to feel they belong. They need to feel that they have um, you know, trusted adults on campus that they can go to. So there is um, a program that we have that our counselors implement with our students. It's called the Triple R program. It's a recognize, um, refuse and report. So we educate our students in that. And um, there also is a, we follow the Chandler Unified School District um, bullying protocol and procedures. So, but basically, you know, in, in a very short answer to that is that that it's we have zero tolerance for it. So anytime we have a report of bullying, we we investigate it, we talk to anybody that might be involved, and we make sure that that all of our students feel safe and welcome and and um, you know at home at Santan Junior High. Awesome. And last question um, for now for you, Mrs. Rosanico, is what are the security measures that we take here at Santan? Um, are the doors locked at all times? Uh, visitors, they have they must check in. Can you speak to that a little bit? Absolutely. All exterior doors to the campus are locked at all times. So we are we are gated. Um, most of the perimeter of the campus is gated. We do have some exterior classroom doors that face our west parking lot and also our bus loop. So those doors are locked at all times. Um, we The gates are locked as soon as the, the kids get here um, in the morning and then they're opened again when they leave in the afternoon. I do have two full-time security guards on campus and the only point of entry for visitors is through our front office and anytime a visitor comes on campus, they have to sign in, they get a visitor badge, and um, we make sure that that you know they're they're safe to to um, be able to go out on campus. We don't have too many adult visitors that come on campus during the day. Really, right now in in the COVID environment, we don't have any. But prior to this, it was it was rare. But there is a a vetting process that happens at the at the attendance at our reception desk before an adult is allowed on campus. Great. I think that's um, all we have. And like I think it was mentioned before, just so everybody knows, we will have like a uh, frequently asked question document that will go out because um, I know there's a lot of questions ha questions happening in the chat. But that's all for Mrs. Rosanico right now. Thank you. All I right, think Mr. Oh, Mr. Garcia, it is your turn for a couple of questions. Um, the first question we have for Mr. Garcia um, is general art learning all about art history or I'm going to be... interrupt for just a second. Mrs. Garangeli, are you going to put Mr. Garcia live or are you going to keep me on live during his questions? I was going to keep you so we weren't switching back and forth, but I will send him live. <laughs> OK, thank you. <laughs> there you go. There we all go. Right, Mr. Garcia, um, is general art learning the history of art or is it actually learning how to do art projects? It is actually both of them. I've been inside of Mrs. Harris's classrooms many of times, and she really goes through a little bit of the history of what they are teaching and how they're going to incorporate the history into present day uh, drawings and, and artwork that they have. So it is a little bit of both. Uh, she does introduce the history of, of what's going on, and then she actually takes it to the present day, and then they go through and create their projects from there. So it is a little bit of both. Uh, it's mostly uh, practicing uh, techniques, uh, but there is a little bit of information having to do with a little bit of the history of the art as well, too. So it's both. All right, perfect. All right, we have a question about band. Um, is band an option for an elective class or is it just orchestra? Oh, both are options. So orchestra and band are, are options for as an elective. Um, it is kind of hard to do both of them. We don't have many students that do both of them, but they do. Uh, you can have the option to, to choose one, your seventh grade and your eighth grade year. Uh, but typically our students stay with what they've signed up in seventh grade, but they are both options to be able to take. Absolutely. All right. Um, for yearbook, we stated that there is um, no application. Would you like to go into that? 
Uh, yeah, well, I believe that we're going to be able to take our students, our the yearbook students into it. Uh, there is an actual kind of a pretty much a, a contract you do have to sign at that portion, and some students will be probably vetted out out of that process. There are times students have to stay after school to take uh, pictures and photos of athletes, of some sports going on. Um, and so there's a lot of requirements uh, for that as well too. So even though it's not going to be a class that you uh, have to kind of get accepted into, there is a strict contract and that might be just the vetting process where some students might eliminate um, from going into it. Uh, but Ms. Johnson really speaks specifically about that with their students that are inside of that yearbook course. All right, perfect. Um, how many elective classes do they get scheduled within the year? Um, well, you sign up for a possibility of four classes. Uh, essentially on that day one, day two process that we have, um, you can take one class on day one and then have a different elective class on day two and that will last through the semester. And then when the semester turns around from first semester to second semester, you can end up with to uh, two totally different kinds of elective classes at that point as well too. So you can have one for day one and day two on both semesters for a total of four elective classes. Okay, perfect. OK, so let's say that we have a really popular elective and there are so many people that sign up for that elective that there are more students than there are spots for that class. How would you select who was going to get into that class versus who wouldn't? It, it kind of is a little bit of a random process. The way Infinite Campus runs our, our, our classes and starts to schedule people inside of there, uh, but our counselors do a phenomenal job on trying to um, to accommodate all our student requests. Uh, we know that in, through the rest registration process, you kind of put in on your priority, you know, your favorite and you number all your, you know, one, your first choice, your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth choice from there on out. And typically we're, we're able to, because of all the four classes that you're able to sign up for, we typically can accommodate that. Uh, it's not a guarantee though, uh, and some classes are a little bit more popular than others and fill up a little bit faster. Uh, but then those are conversations that we pull students in and then do communicate with parents on that as well too. Okay, I may have one more question for you. Um, for our students who are at COA right now, um, how do they go about getting the registration information? And then how do they go about getting their registration forms over to us once they have filled those forms out? You know, Mrs. Uh, Edwards, I'm going to go ahead and allow you to go ahead and answer that one. Uh, Mrs. Edwards is in charge of going to all our elementary schools and getting those registration forms coming in. I know you have a, a, a big schedule. I think we go and visit 12 different elementary schools at 12 different times um, and you've been doing those online visits already uh, and I'm not sure your schedule on that with COA and when when you were going out on that. So I'll let you answer that question, Mrs. Edwards. All right, we actually, if you were at COA, um, you should have actually seen those videos be pushed out to you last Monday. Um, if you did not receive that information, I would recommend you contact one of the two counselors at COA. Um, I would contact Danae Gleason. Um, she was the one who we actually pushed those videos to. Um, if you did not see those videos, we do have them. Um, we actually have them on our website. But if you didn't get them from Ms. Gleason, I would contact her. But if you did not get a registration form, they are also on our website. If you go to our homepage and go to the registration tab, we have both the seventh and the eighth grade um, forms. If for some reason you have a sibling that's there and they didn't get that either, um, we have both of those grade levels forms on our website. Um, and what you could do is you could either scan them in and email them to us if you didn't feel comfortable coming to school, or you could um, email them, you could uh, mail them, or you could just drop them in physically. We'll take them anyway. But it's the same way you would do the one through six, and we would take them however you had them. So, but you should have received that information last Monday. So if you didn't, I would inquire. So um, at this point, I'm going to hand it off to Kathy Roman where she should have questions for Ms. Garangeli. All right, hello, new stormers. I have a few questions for our athletic director. The first one is, will Santan Junior High offer after school sports? All of our sports, they'll either practice in the morning or in the afternoon, but all games are in the afternoon. So we are hoping with the pandemic that is happening right now that it will not be a factor in anything and then we will have our four quarters of sports. So yes, the games are in the afternoons. Um, it could be Monday through Thursday and then some of the practices are either in the morning or the afternoon so that people have an equal amount of gym time or field time. Thank you. 
The second question is about tryouts. Does volleyball require tryouts? Volleyball does require tryouts. All of our sports um, do require tryouts. There are three um, sports that are no cut. So in the second quarter, we have cr cross country. That is a non-cut sport. In the third quarter, wrestling is a non-cut sport. And then in fourth quarter, track is a non-court sport. And both of those, are, all three of those are co-ed. All of the others do um, have a limit of spaces for the team. But if you love it, go out and try it. Great. The last question is about physicals. When do physicals need to occur for eligibility? So usually physicals, they will last one year. And so we do ask you to wait until um, fourth quarter. So May, if you got a physical in May, that will last for an entire year. And that's why I always recommend the summer when it's not as hectic to get a doctor's appointment and that students won't miss school. But it's really important that you have your physical before you try out for first season if you're interested in any of those. Thanks, Janine. You're welcome. And we'll send it back to Marianne for a few more questions and then we will end the presentation. There seems to be um, a lot of questions regarding registration. So I'm going to let Mrs. Edwards kind of take that over because I think she's writing down some questions um, so she can answer those for everybody. All right, Mr. Garcia, I have lots of questions for you if you are ready. OK. OK. All right, Mr. Garcia, um, how do we register our sixth grade student for incoming seventh grade at Santan Junior High? Are they, uh, I guess my question on that one, are they a, a, a student at a feeder school on that, Mrs. Edwards? I would, I would imagine, yes. So they're taking the registration form that you're giving them, correct, when you're visiting with them and then turning that in. You will be out at the elementary schools, uh, physically picking those up and meeting with students individually to try to fill them out, correct? Correct. And they would also be entering those into Infinite Campus. In campus, correct. Yes. So you enter the information into Infinite Campus and Mrs. Edwards will be out to the elementary, like I said, uh, to pick those up. When do you start going out there, Mrs. Edwards? Um, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, okay. And so that registration process will start to take place at that point and we'll start to fill in their schedules. All right, the next question is, do seventh and eighth graders mix their classes? Uh, seventh and eighth graders uh, typically only mix classes for elective courses. Uh, so seventh graders stay within their own core teams or their core classes, so do eighth graders. Uh, but when we get into the elective courses, they do have a mix of classes of grade levels at the elective courses. Okay, do we put one through six for semester classes as well as one through six for full year, or do we just put one through six for the whole registration form? What do you think, Ms. Edwards? One through six for the whole registration form. Do not put one through six for electives and then also for um, semester. Uh, you do not do yes, one through six for the whole form, because otherwise you would be picking 12 electives wow. and that would be way too many. All right, um, how do I enroll my student in honors classes? You want to, do you want to touch okay. base on that one, Ms. Edwards? Um, what we would do, we look at a couple of different things. We look at AZ merit scores, which I know last year we didn't have. So we're also talking to teachers. We're getting um, teacher recommendations. We are looking at those AZ merit scores and we're also looking at current grades. Um, so we're looking at a couple of different things. Um, we are also doing everything we can to hope that we can get those AZ merit scores in um, for this year. I know it's going to be kind of cutting it close, um, but we're looking at any kind of placement test, any kind of data that we can get that is available to us. We're looking at Galileo testing. We're looking at everything we can. Um, math is a little bit easier because it does kind of scaffold on itself. Um, so if your student is already in that honors math, um, it would be easy to know that they would be um, going into that you know, honors level math. Um, for ELA, we are talking to every teacher we can to try to get that um, recommendation letter from the teacher. So um, the next question, um, how do we get into advanced orchestra? 
Um, that is actually on the yellow sheet because it actually says that you can audition for Mr. Hancock or for Mr. Gott to get into any of the advanced level bands. Even for um, choir, you could get into advanced level choir with, with um, auditioning for the teacher. Um, so if I haven't been out to your um, son or daughter's school yet, um, that information is all on the form. Someone asked if I had visited Basha Elementary and I did. Um, if you want to call me, my information is on the website, so you can go ahead and call me if you still have questions. Um, gifted testing, same thing. If your son or daughter has already been in the gifted program, they automatically roll over unless you let us know that you do not want them to be in the gifted academy. Um, so sometimes we do get that, um, but otherwise they're automatically in unless you want to talk to April Daly, who is at the district level, and you could inquire regarding the gifted testing. Um, trying to make sure I get to all of these. How many classes are there per day, Mr. Garcia? Would that be up in the air still regarding? Um, right now we have six. Our goal is to maybe see if we keep six is kind of where we are right now. Right now we have six. Um, I think that is actually all of our questions. So I'm going to turn it back to Mrs. Rosanico. Thank you, counselors and Mr. Garcia and, and Mrs. Garangeli. Um, I do see I, there's 50 questions in the in the box. So and I know we did not get to all of them. So I just want to make sure that you know that we will be po um, publishing on our website a frequently asked question sheet where we will answer all of the questions that are that are in this um, presentation tonight. So look for that. It will um, hopefully show not hopefully it will be on there tomorrow. Um, I also saw a question in the box about the live links. So any place in this presentation that you see um, blue, which is a live link, we're going to upload this presentation so you will be able to look at it and then just click on the, the link in order to access the videos and all the other things that we have um, um, referenced for you here. So there's a lot of information in this slideshow that we didn't show live that you can go and and work through the show on your own and and make some choices for your student lots of information especially about our electives the link there for um, registration is the counselors giving you step-by-step -step instructions on how to register using um, infinite campus using the student portal so again i encourage you to go through the the presentation you know with your student after when we post it to the website tomorrow it will be posted under the site shortcuts so um, look for that um, it's on the right side of our website um, i think that that is all i had so again i just wanted to thank you for for being here with us tonight i can't tell you how excited we are to welcome our new seventh grade students how excited we are to um, begin a new school year this year. I think, you know, understandably for everybody, not just at school, but it's been a really challenging, challenging year. It's been, you know, the most challenging year of my career, and I'm sure it has it is, has been for for most of my colleagues. So um, I believe I feel like we've done a really good job of adjusting and, and making um, changes as needed and still, you know, keeping, you know, the the one thing that we always focus on, and I, I I go over this with administrators, counselors, and teachers, the question that I always ask is, what is best for the student? So when a question is posed, that's the the foundation, that's the the kind of the, the guiding light for us is that we tr always try to make our decisions as long as we can, you know, it's within boundaries that we do what is best for our students. So, and I feel like we've done that this year. Um, lots of things were missing, the student interaction, the activities, the dances, and all the really fun things that not only our students have a great time at, but but we do also. So staff is is missing those things. And again, we're just looking forward to welcoming a new class and, and beginning a new school year next year. On the previous slide, I posted my email address, Mr. Garcia's email address, um, Mrs. Garangeli's address. So I encourage you, if you didn't get something answered and you don't see it in our frequently asked questions, we welcome you to reach out to us personally. Um, I, I enjoy getting phone calls. My my phone number is on the website along with um, the other two assistant principals and the counselors as well. So thank you for coming and um, joining our virtual presentation. It was our first one. So um, first one, you know, ever for Santan Junior High School. If you have feedback, you know, reach out and let us know um, how we did. And again, um, we were glad you're here. So I think Mrs. Garangeli, you'll go ahead and take us off live.